Today's session is about uh, the characteristic basis function method in FECO. So here is the outline of uh, what we planned for today. We'll first have a quick glance at the highlights of the latest FECO release, uh, which is uh, version 2023. Of all the new features, today we'll focus on the characteristic uh, basis function method, where uh, we will go through some background information on the method and then uh, the options available under that method which are uh, illustrated with some examples as well and finally the conclusions coming to the highlights of uh, 2023 we have uh, the characteristic basis function method uh, that can be used with both uh, method of moments and MLFM solvers in FECO. Today's session is uh, completely dedicated uh, to give some insights uh, into the background and the advantages of uh, using it. Apart from this, there are several other new features in 2023. However, I will only list them here uh, without elaborating on them. As Shannon mentioned, there are dedicated sessions uh, focused on the other features. So let's uh, go through the list. We have uh, ARM FECO for adaptive mesh refinement. We also now have the domain connectivity method uh, to treat the physical gap uh, in adjacent geometry parts. Now, there are uh, several new antenna models uh, that are added uh, to the component library. A method of men's part uh, can now have dielectrics uh, when using in combination with uh, ray launching geometrical optics. And uh, CMA now supports uh, lossy dielectrics. And uh, finally, uh, some load restrictions have been relaxed for uh, cable simulations. So that's the list. Now uh, let's get into the topic for today which is uh, the characteristic uh, basis function method. In short, CBFM. CBFM, uh, it's also called a macro basis function method. It is nothing but a modification of the conventional method of means or MLFM solution that reduces the overall number of unknowns by using macro basis functions. So less number of unknowns means less memory and less time because of the way characteristic basis functions are formed the matrix formation needs more time however the overall problem size will be reduced because of the cbfs so that will speed up uh, the solution time this method is most effective for problems with many right hand side excitations for example if we take the case of uh, monostatic RCS, uh, in a typical method of men's solution uh, of uh, ZI is equal to V, only the incident angles or the excitations uh, which are part of the V matrix on the right hand side, they are changing. So for those type of cases, uh, this method will help a lot to both reduce the memory as well as uh, the speed up uh, simulation time. The current limitation of this method is uh, its applicability only to metallic structures. However, dielectrics uh, can be supported as uh, coatings on these uh, metallic surfaces. Now, uh, if you want to summarize the way this method works, uh, in short summary, the RW basis functions of the method of MEMS or MLFMEM, uh, they are replaced by characteristic basis functions. But uh, to elaborate uh, a little bit more on the method, what we do is uh, we first divide the problem into blocks or domains. These blocks are uh, typically parallelopipeds with a side length of one or a few wavelengths. In each block, we compute a number of CBFs and each CBF is an aggregation of the regular or the low level basis functions like the RWGs with specific weights. The CBFs in general, 
they do not have a predefined shape they usually resemble the current distribution inside their block so here on the slide uh, you can see some of those shapes one important feature of uh, the cbfs inside a block is they are all orthonormal meaning the inner product between the cbfs is always zero it is uh, because of the way they are computed so how are they computed the cbfs are computed by defining them as uh, primary and secondary where uh, the primary cbfs are currents induced by external excitations on each block so there will be only one primary cbf per block as explained before the cbfs uh, resemble the current distribution in their block so the currents are obtained by defining sources surrounding each block and obtaining an orthogonal base from the currents induced by those sources to simplify the sources can be assumed as uh, plane waves instant from different angles with a certain angular increment between them next the secondary cbfs on a given block are nothing but uh, the currents induced by the radiated fields from all primary cbfs on the remaining blocks now once we have uh, the primary and the secondary uh, cbfs the overall solution is computed by considering uh, the cbfs as the basis and testing functions instead of the regular rwg basis functions so this will give us uh, the surface currents and once the surface currents are known all the other quantities can be derived uh, as the currents and fields are uh, interrelated in maxwell's equations so here uh, we have an example to show the benefits of uh, cbfm especially when computing uh, the monostatic rcs so here uh, we used uh, a ship example to demonstrate that the ship is uh, 114 meters long so it's a uh, 114 wavelengths in size at uh, 300 megahertz so meshing that uh, with respect to lambda over 10 uh, we have uh, more than 1.7 million uh, triangular mesh elements so for this electrical size obviously we can't use a regular method of means so the problem is solved with a multi level fast multipole method to compute rcs over uh, 181 incident angles uh, if you look at uh, the uh, table here uh, the regular uh, mlfm took 53 uh, gb of ram and close to 2 hours that's uh, when running in parallel on 16 cores whereas mlfm with uh, cbfm only took 28 gb and ran for uh, 1.7 hours okay so overall uh, we can see close to 50% reduction in memory and uh, more than 10% reduction in time okay. but when it comes to accuracy both uh, the regular mlfm as well as uh, the cbfm based approach uh, they give exactly the same answer Now this is uh, another example uh, which is uh, smaller than uh, the previous uh, ship so here we computed rcs using both uh, the method of means as well as the mlfm solver okay. and uh, looking at uh, the comparison table once again we see that the cbfm approach takes a lot less memory and time compared to regular uh, method of means or mlfm okay. especially uh, with method of means we see almost uh, a 20 fold reduction in memory it came down uh, from more than 200 uh, gb to around uh, 10 gb okay. so that's a huge uh, savings in memory now uh, when computing the cbfm currents uh, there are uh, generally two approaches okay. one is uh, the method of means based approach where the low level basis functions like the rwg basis functions are used uh, to calculate the cbfs in each block the other is the physical optics based approach where uh, a simple 
two end cross edge approximation of physical optics will be used for calculating uh, the CBFs uh, in each block. Obviously, uh, the physical optics based approach will be faster uh, as it is not as rigorous as the method of means, but uh, we don't recommend it uh, for every scenario. Uh, in FECO, the electric field integral equation or the EFIE is the default, but uh, for problems uh, involving closed metallic objects, CFIE or the combined field integral equation can be used. So for problems where uh, CFIE can be used, you can use the PO based approach to save further computational resources in terms of both memory and time. Otherwise, uh, if the problem is not uh, a closed metallic structure, uh, just use a method of means based approach, uh, which is anyway the default in FECO, just like uh, the EFIE. As there are uh, multiple options, uh, let's have a comparison uh, between them. For the same aircraft that we just saw, uh, we bumped up the frequency from uh, 350 megahertz to 1 gigahertz uh, to make it electrically much larger and then solved it with uh, the MLFM solver. Now, for this one, uh, we have almost uh, 900k triangles. This aircraft, uh, it's a completely closed geometry so we can apply uh, CFI on it. Now, uh, looking at the numbers uh, in the table, we can see that uh, CFI is orders of magnitude faster than EFI. Uh, this is because of uh, the faster convergence for the MLFM iterative solver when using CFI. However, uh, looking at uh, the result here, uh, we can see a little bit of uh, discrepancy between EFIE and CFIE at certain uh, instant angles. And uh, if you ask me, I would say CFIE is more accurate uh, as we are solving both the integral equations as opposed to just one with uh, EFIE. And here, uh, please note that we haven't used CBFM yet uh, with the MLFM. So let's see what happens when we enable uh, CBFM as well. Now, oh, if you look at the table here uh, with a CBFM, there is a reduction in memory for uh, both uh, the MOM based approach uh, as well as uh, the PO based approach. Uh, however, uh, in both cases, uh, there is uh, a little bit of uh, increase uh, in the simulation time or the runtime. Okay? So what this uh, tells us is, uh, if you want savings uh, in both memory and time, uh, the problem should be electrically even larger. So that's why uh, the ship, uh, which was uh, almost like uh, more than 100 wavelengths in size, uh, we saw a reduction in both uh, memory and time, uh, whereas here we saw reduction only in the memory. So still, if you have a machine uh, with the limited resources where you're not able to run the problem because of memory, you can st uh, still take advantage of uh, CFI for those problems. So what I would uh, like to do is, uh, I would like to show you like uh, where you can enable uh, these options, both uh, the EFIE changing between EFIE and CFIE, as well as uh, enabling uh, the CBFM. So when you have uh, a geometry in FECO, uh, in the left side uh, bottom corner, uh, you have uh, all the faces or the surfaces of that uh, geometry. So usually you can select uh, the surfaces that forms uh, a closed uh, region. And when you right click, uh, you go to properties and under the solution tab, uh, this is where you can change from uh, electric field uh, to combined field integral equation. Okay. And uh, to enable uh, CBFM itself uh, under the solver run tab, go to solver settings. And under the general tab uh, itself, uh, we have the option to activate characteristic basis function method. So this is uh, for both uh, either uh, the method of men solver or the MLFM as well. So under the MLFM slash ACA tab, uh, if you enable MLFM and uh, activate uh, CBFM, then both of them will be applied. And you can see you have the option to use either uh, the mom based approach or uh, the PO based approach. So let me bring back uh, the slides. So in conclusion, from what we saw so far, uh, we can say that 
CBFM is uh, very useful to monostatic or says type of problems where there are a lot of uh, right hand side excitations. The examples also demonstrate that uh, CBFM method saves both uh, time and memory for electrically large models. I would recommend to go with uh, the default uh, mom based uh, method for majority of the problems, but uh, use the pew based method only where uh, CFI is applicable. So this is all uh, what I planned for today.